What's going on guys, Tosker here, and in this video we're actually going to start creating some view models and put in some basic implementations. Now for the basic implementations, we're going to go over here. I created a folder called Utility, and we have two objects that we're not unfamiliar with, uh, such as the relay command here, and also the observable object. Now I skipped ahead of typing these out in videos because we've done this a hundred times, and if you are unfamiliar with these, I have in the description below links to videos specifically dedicated to these two classes. But moving on, what we want to do next is go over to our Solution Explorer and we actually want to create an app view model. Now in the app view model, whoops. In the app view model, what we're basically going to have this be is this is going to be the main view model of our application. So we'll create this public. So public here. And we want it to derive from our observable object. And of course, add in the namespace there. And next, we're going to create a current view. Now, this is going to be, uh, if you remember, we left our content control in our main window empty earlier. So this is going to be what we are going to bind to to basically get our data template and tell us which view to display. Now we actually may not be doing a lot of view switching here, but I want to just set it up this way because one, it's not too complicated and two, uh, rather have it than not need it than need it and not have it. So of course we'll get our private and set and we'll call the on property changed here then update when we change the binding. Now there are a few things we're going to need now too because we're going to basically implement our default view in here and we haven't really set up any yet. So we want to create a folder here and we're going to call it view models and we're going to may as well also create our views folder and lastly a models folder. Now in our view models we're going to create two classes here. Now the first view model we're going to make is going to be a book view model. And a second one we're going to make is going to be a contacts view model. Now the first one we want to worry about of course is our book view model. This will be our initial view and we'll make this public and of course we'll also be derived from our observable <laughs> object and then we'll go over here to our contacts view model make that public and this will also be an observable object. Now we're going to get more into that in just a second, but we want to now go back to our app view model. And we're going to set up a private book view model. Of course, add in our view models namespace here. And we're going to call this book VM. And we'll create a public property for it. And now that's all set, we want to create a little constructor here. And we want to create a new book view model. And then we want to set our current view to the book view model. Now we're also going to want to create uh, some data templating, but we need some views to work with. So we're going to create some user controls here. And we're going to have them empty for now, but of course in another video we're going to get to them. So we're going to look here and as we create our user control we're going to name it book view and it'll load it up. We're going to go back over to views, add, new user control and then we're going to name this one contact item view and hit add. So now that we have that set up, we want to go over to our app.xaml. Right here above our brushes, we're going to create a data template. 
and it'll have a data type where we'll do x type and we'll create it to be book view model. Now you notice here we're going to have a little error and that's because we did not put in a namespace. So we want to go up here to our XML namespaces and we'll call these VM for short. CLR namespace simple contact book and we will find our view models folder and then we can put the prefix in for VM then lastly we also want to create a XML namespace for our views which we'll call V and CLR namespace simple simple contact book views and then inside our data template here we're going to just set our book view. So what we can do next now is we'll go back over to our main window go down to our XAML and we'll find that content that we had empty earlier and here it is and we're going to simply do binding current view. So we have our binding here, however uh, we are currently not binding to our app view model because we never set the data context of the window. So if we scroll up to the top here, right below the window tag we're going to call window.dataContext and then within these tags we're going to go to our local namespace that we have defined because this app view model has not been put in a folder and we'll find our app view model here and we'll set it. So now we should have our data context set to the app view model. Uh, in the app view model we have it by default set to the book view. So we'll bind to the current view which should change to the book view. And it'll change to that because over here in our app.xaml we set the data template up for uh, when we have a content control if the data type is a book view model it'll set it to a book view. So let's run the application and see if it does what we want. Um, but the only way we'll be able to tell, because we left our views empty, if we go over to our book view, go down to the XAML, uh, for now we'll just give it a background color so we know what it, it's doing what it's supposed to, and we'll make it yellow. So if we see a yellow view, then we know it's working. So we'll run the application. And when our application runs here, we have a yellow view down here. So we know our binding and our data templating is working. So in the next video, we're going to work on implementing our view models as well as designing the views for them.